in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Welcome to Islam for Dummies. Today, we will be talking about the false claim that there are grammatical mistakes in the Quran. First, we need to understand the relationship between the Quran and the grammar of the Arabic language. In his book, entitled The Quran, an encyclopedia, Oliver Lehman, who holds a PhD from Cambridge University, wrote, The Quran is the oldest book in the Arabic language system, and even today is regarded as the final authority regarding diction, morphology, syntax, grammar, and rhetoric in Arabic. From a linguistic point of view, the Quran was the most important event in the history of the Arabic language. It not only codified the grammar and the lexicon of the language, it also presented the Arabs with linguistic possibilities never before imagined by poets and orators. Therefore, because the Quran is the main source and guide for Arabic grammar, it is quite ridiculous to challenge its linguistic mastery. Anyone making such an absurd claim about the Quran is simply proving their own ignorance about Arabic grammar itself. While we have sufficiently proven the logical impossibility of grammatical mistakes in the Quran, we will examine some of these false claims anyway. First, let's examine a fabrication from Zachariah Boutros, where he misquotes what is written in the Quran in order to attack it. Surah Taha Ayat Ratasiti. Surah Taha Ratasiti. In Hazan. But verse 2063 is actually. In Hazan. This blunder disqualifies his entire drawn out argument. He is ignorant of the fact that this alternate pronunciation of the verse is an established and well-documented Arabic style and does not even change the original Quranic spelling. For those like Boutros making such false claims to attack the Quran, their own argument ironically discredits both their Old and New Testaments. According to religioustolerance.org, Biblical scholars have noted that about every page of the Bible, whether written in Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek, contains both spelling and grammatical mistakes. And even though Boutros fails to demonstrate even a speck of sawdust about the Quran's grammar, he should still adhere to the following advice. Matthew 7, 3. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye, and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Secondly, other false claims naively use only part of the Arabic grammar to the exclusion of advanced rules. For example, they try to use elementary level grammar rules to object against highly advanced linguistic constructs in the Quran, which are obviously not taught in lower grammar levels. Such passages go far beyond the doctorate level of linguistic prowess complexity, and intricacies, and as such, cannot be analyzed by the limited scope of first-grade grammar rules. Now, let's watch Boutros admit that his analysis uses only first-grade grammar. In the first grade, we learned the Arabic language. In the first grade, we learned the first grade. We learned the first grade. Unlike Boutros, the early pagan Arabs were properly qualified to discuss the Arabic language, yet none of them ever made the uneducated claim of linguistic errors. When confronted with the wondrous linguistic nature of the Quran, his enemies were forced to accuse Prophet Muhammad of sorcery. Oliver Lehman explains that the Quran was deemed so superior, indeed so beautiful, that even in the eyes of the Prophet Muhammad's bitterest opponents, it transcended the merely human. Because the language of the Quran was so captivating, the Quraysh had to literally ban their people from listening to Muhammad's recitations. 
The claim of grammatical errors in the Quran is even more juvenile than a first grader accusing William Shakespeare of not knowing English, because the Quran is the main basis for documenting Arabic grammar. Thirdly, let's listen to the person T.X. Halabi's invention of rules for assigning Quranic chapter titles. Today I will be talking about four just chapter titles. Al Mu'aminun, Al Munafiqun, Al Kafirun all end with un, the sound un. In Arabic, that, de that denotes the uh, nominative case, which is the subject of the sentence. However, when we go to al mutaffifin it should actually be al mutaffifun Because al mutaffifin the way it's written in the Quran, it is actually either in the genitive or the accusative case. He is gravely mistaken, because there is no rule in any language that says that a chapter title must be a noun and cannot be a verb, object or even a letter. Furthermore, al mutafifin is the object, not the subject, of the first sentence in this chapter, so it is, of course, correct? In conclusion, Due to its linguistic superiority, the Quran was the main source used to codify Arabic grammar. We saw how people claiming that it contains grammatical mistakes end up only demonstrating remarkable ignorance about the Arabic language itself. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Islam for Dummies, and we hope to see you again next time.